In this video, we'll learn about applying forces on the top surface or on a surface using F command for the nodes as opposed to using the SF command to apply a pressure tensile or compressive on the top surface of a block, for example. So here we want to apply uh, nodal forces to each of the nodes on the top surface that I've shown what with Fn. But the important thing to note in here is that not all the nodes will have the same amount of Fn to give the F total. The corner nodes will get a quarter of the Fn. The mid nodes or the edge nodes that I've shown by the red rectangle will give half the nodal force. And the mid nodes here with the green rectangle will receive the entire Fn. The summation of this equation will give F total. And the reason behind this is that the corner nodes are only attached to one element. So here, this corner node is attached to just this element. So uh, in, free, in space, the other, third, the other three quarters are empty of nodes. The edge nodes like this, this and that, and the other uh, nodes shown with the red rectangle are attached to two nodes. So half of the space around them is empty, whereas the mid nodes like these are covered by elements in all four quarters. As a result, this equation holds for a block like this. And if I simplify it, I will have Fn times this coefficient is equal to F total. So if I have F total, and if I know the number of nodes, corner nodes, edge nodes, and mid nodes, I can use this equation to figure out how much force I have to apply per node. But how do I know how many nodes I have here and how many nodes I have in the middle? Because that is determined by mesh size, and mesh size could be a variable depending on the user. To get that, a useful command in ANSYS exists, which is called star get, that we will use in this example. So let's go to ANSYS and try this. I'm going to create a very small or a very basic geometry, a block, and apply nodal forces on the top of, on the on its top surface. So let's start with prep seven and select an element type. I want to pick element 186, which is a higher order structural element in 3D. I don't need to apply real constant, so I go to material properties, EX, Young's modulus, let's be 211 or 200 gigapascals, and then Poisson ratio. Twenty-seven. Now let's create a block which goes from zero to point two in x direction, point two, zero to one in the y direction, and zero to point two in z direction. And let's just show that on in three D. Now I want to mesh this. I say type comma one. Oh, that was wrong. Type comma one and mat comma one and e size. Let's give uh, point zero five and mesh the volume. So I have these volumes. I have four corner nodes and I have nodes in here. But also because I am using a higher order element type. I'm going to have nodes in mid points as well. So I'm going to have more nodes than three here. As a result, I don't know how many nodes I'm going to have. And that's good that I can use the star get command in ANSYS. The first thing I want to do is to find the node numbers for these quarter nodes. Again, I don't know them. And the best and the easiest way to get that is to say n1, a variable name, is equal to node. And I know the coordinates, so I can say 0 for x, 1 for y, and z, 0 for z. Use the same command to get the um, node, uh, node number for a node located at x equals 0 0.2, y1, and z0. 
then I want to define a third node x equals 0.2, y is equal 1, and z is equal to 0.2. And finally, the fourth node. So now I have the node numbers for all the four corner nodes here. If I come to parameters, scalar parameters, the node numbers are given there. Now I want to select all these four nodes one by one. So I'm going to say n cell s node comma comma n1 which is the value which again I don't know what it is and I don't need to know then n cell also select node node 2 also select node 3 and also select node 4 and if I do n plot these are my four nodes the corner nodes if I move this you can see the four corner nodes I'm going to create a component using these nodes. Use cm command and give a name. I call it crn underscore nod. And the entity is nodes. So I'm going to create that. I'm going to say all cell. So before I move forward, let me see what would happen if I say n cell s node and then use the name that I picked. Do n plot. You can see that all those only those four nodes are selected. I'm going to do all cell and move forward. If I do e plot now, what I want to do is I want to select the nodes on the edges but not the mid nodes. So if I select nodes on these surfaces, the four uh, surfaces along the that go uh, in the y direction, and then reselect the nodes on the top surface and unselect the corner nodes I will have the edge nodes so let's do this in practice I can say n cell s location x 0 which was that surface I rotated this surface n cell also select location x 0.2 which was the length of the block in x direction. Now I want to say n cell also location z0 and n cell also location z.2. If I do n plot now, if I look from in 3D, but let's take a look from top, I can see that the nodes on the four surfaces are created. But what I want is if I look from side, I want only these nodes on the top surface. So I say n cell reselect location where y is equal to 1. So if I do n plot, now I have only the nodes that I want selected, but I don't want to select the uh, corner nodes. So I do n cell unselect nodes and then crn node is the name that I defined earlier. If I do n plot now, I see that the corner nodes are not there anymore. If I zoom in. I'm going to create a component with these. I'm going to call, call them edge node and say nodes. And something I want to do is to keep the number of these nodes. And that's how I'm going to use the star get command for. So star get I've shown in here it can have entity so it gets a parameter which is a name that the user defines the entity here could be node and some parameters let's go in pre-processing and find this features for a node selection so I click on node and I can say uh, item 1 could be location angle and cell whether it's selected or not and then here it also has some more features one of them is called count which means number of nodes in the selected set so if I do star get given name not name put node and zero because I'm not using a specific node and item which would be um, count and item number one is going to be empty it should give me the number of nodes there so if I do star get and let's call this node edge 
which means number of nodes in the edges, and say I'm going to do nodes, no, no particular node, I can give zero or I can put, give nothing, and then call count. Now if I come to parameters, I see that I have 28 nodes there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I have four edges, so it's going to be 28. Now I do all cell and E plot. Next, I want to have the nodes on the top surface and the mid nodes, not the edge nodes and not the corner nodes. So what I can do is to say N cell S location by Y equals one. Do N plot. N cell undo corner nodes. And actually I have to do node comma comma first and N plot. And then N cell also unselect nodes edge node now and plot. Now I only have the mid nodes. What I'm going to do in here is I'm going to make a component with them. I'm going to call them mid node nodes. And then I want to also get the number of nodes that I have there. Start get not mid node, no particular node, and give me the count. So that's it's going to have. So let's come here and see that I have 33 nodes in the middle. I say all cell and E plot. Now I want to apply a hundred Newton force on the top surface, but each node is going to get just a portion of it. So what I do is I make a coefficient which is equal to one plus um, here is going to be half times not edge plus not mid from the equation that we saw in the PowerPoint. So oh, I actually gave a wrong name not mid. Now it works. So if I take a look at the parameters, the coefficient is 48. Now I can say Fn is equal to 100, which is the force I want to apply, divided by coef. So what is that? Fn is 2.08333. Now what I want to do is to apply the forces. So I say F to the corner nodes, Fy in the Y direction, Fn divided by 4. Now the same thing, but for the edge nodes, and then I want to apply the the actual node or the force to the mid nodes. Now they're applied. Next, I want to move, uh, I want to fix the bottom surface. So I say N cell S location Y0, which means select all the nodes in the Y0 location. I can do N plot to see what I have. And I can say D all, all zero. And all cell. E plot to show the elements. Right now this model is ready to be solved, but what I want to do is to make sure that my nodes don't move in the x and y direction to make it purely um, tensile force. So what I can do is to say D all for all the nodes without selecting any particular node, ux0, and do the same thing in the uz direction. So all of my nodes will only move in the z direction. This makes it a perfectly 1D tensile force. I can say finish, go to solution, and pick n type, let's say static for now, 
and solve. Um, it says property ex of material reference has set to zero. Let's see why this happened. Probably I didn't define the material properties properly here. Oh yes, I skipped a one there. So what I'm going to do is do finny, go back to prep seven, and say epex one to e11, and let's make sure that it actually worked. Uh, stuff like these happen in coding. So if I go to material model and now it's set properly, and what I want to do is come back to solution and solve it and this time the solution is done and what I want to do is say PLN soul U Y oh I didn't go to post processing yet post one and then I can do that and I can see that there is a perfectly 1D uh, displacement of the note so the next thing I want to do is I want to say P P R R four, and I can see that the summation of reaction forces in the y direction is hundred or minus hundred, and that's because I wanted to apply a hundred fo newton force on the top surface. Now I have a minus hundred newton reaction force on the bottom surface. Now the reason I have these other reaction forces which eventually lead to zero is that I said don't move in the x and z direction so I applied restrictions in the x and z directions that's why I have reaction forces in those nodes but the summation of them is actually zero so it means that there is no stresses or reaction forces actually in the x and z directions so by going through properly applying the nodal forces to the top surface of a block we'll learn how to apply a nodal force or a concentrated force on the surface in ANSYS APDL.